There you guys, out with the uh, out with the Hubson today, just to um, it'll be the first flight flight. I've taken it to give it a bit of a hover last night and took it out the front. Just went up and down in front of me a few times and it seemed okay. So uh, today it's going to be a little fly around here. It's cold, um, but it's quiet, which is good. Sorry, want it. So I'm going to give this a go now. I can't record it with um, the one recorder, the normal one. I've got to do it with the phone because I forgot the battery for the other one. So we'll just have to get on with that. Well, we've got FPV viewer for this. And so we'll see how that does anyway. Put my gloves on, it's bloody freezing. Okay, so that's what it was like. Uh, on the fourth day. Okay. Let's turn this off a bit. Look at watch. I've got no idea what it's going to be like flying it with gloves on, but. No. Okay. Let's just take the gloves off. I feel like that. I can't feel anything properly. Let's try again. It feels a bit weird flying it and I think that's because I've gotten used to these ZMR frames and these are carbon fibre and they're really rigid and these guys who have a hopes and know if you hold a motor in each hand diagonally across the hubson and you can twist it about you know it's, uh, it's got quite a bit of flexibility in there and I can feel that I can feel that with this so there's one thing that's quite different to what I've just you know, been used to flying and now also the power I'm having to use a lot more throttle well I say a lot more sort of 10% more throttle to do the same sort of flying around which isn't really pushing it if you think of the throttle you know, you've got 100% on that so yeah it does feel a bit different and the horizontal lines there normally when I put the crosshairs into where I want to go that's where I'm going but on this one I'm going to do it to those two top horizontal lines they're pretty near from the same sort of place what the crosshairs would be I've got a bit of a, a sniffle on out there because it's cold and uh, I'm, my back's a bit dodgy as well at the minute I just feel like I have a bit of a trap nerve or something yes yeah, so that's it that's, uh, I, I'm not going to put any music to this I just thought I'd let you know uh, I thought it's worth the the reason why I've got the on-screen display is because I wanted to try different cameras and because of the way it's set up it's a little bit hard to try different cameras using the same transmitter. On the Hudson controller I'm going to use switches for photos or telling the video to start or start. That's not going to bother me because it's all going through my controller anyway and I've got a little DVR device that I'm going to be able to record what you can actually see on my screen because I want you to be able to see things like the antenna string. So when I'm flying around trying different antennas you get to see what the signal strength is as well without me having to try and tell you what it is through the video or whatever. You get to see it digitally you know, by, by the numbers at the top right so that's going to be pretty good so yeah but this isn't too bad you know flying around it's not too bad
it does seem wibbly wobbly, doesn't it? That's because I'm, you know, I'm still getting used to my control in a way, and it is cold, and my uh, my thumb action is all smooth out. I don't get so much of thumb twitch now, where before I was getting quite a lot of thumb twitch. That's because I was so nervous. Oops. Yeah, that's going to happen on the back side when that happens. But never mind. It's okay. Can't get this one to get up. Oops, that's no good. Switch the power off, which is a lovely thing. Just so have to flick the switch and the power's off. Don't have to worry about that. Don't have to worry about the props churning away into the ground or trying to do anything dodgy like that. I'll skip through this bit. Seems alright. Ah, oh, it's terrible. My stuff is terrible. Uh, there's nothing I can do, is there? It's not so I can quickly grab a tissue out my nose and uh, it blow. Oh, I mean, I suppose I could. I could land and do it, but um, it's cold out there, and all I want to do is get the little flight and get a feel for it. See, get back, start looking at the video, and see what needs to be done. And like I realised, I was on 25 milliwatts because there's no way this is anything more than 25 milliwatts. And I got it back and checked it. Yeah, I'm 25 milliwatts, which I could have checked when I was out there. Because for some reason, well, I'll have to show you. Um, I've got a menu which I shouldn't have. I can't actually change anything with it though. I can just look at it. I can change it, but it doesn't set in real life. It says it has, but it, it doesn't do it. So that's a bit strange what's happening. But I'll have to show you that in another video rather than try and describe it. But it doesn't seem to be flying too bad. It doesn't seem to be flying too bad. I'll adjust the throttle range on my uh, Tyrannus for this particular model. I put it in as a H501SE. <laughs> the E is very lucky fund. <laughs> yeah. If I used my name rather than a lucky fund, I could say it was Simonized. <laughs> Let's see what it does for batteries. I think with the way it was, uh, I didn't take it all the way down to uh, like seven volts or anything. I was only on two cells, so we can get uh, six point six at the lowest, really, absolute emergency lowest. Yeah. And there will hardly be any difference between the increase of power being used from 25 milliwatts to 200 milliwatts. Um, just because it having to use a bunch of power anyway just to be working in the first place. Yeah, like I say, apart from that bit of wobble, I'm going to try and see if I can figure out a way of in the frame, maybe spraying in some sort of foam to try and make it a bit more rigid, but then I'll have a problem on I if I come to take it apart. It, if it's all going to be stuck in there, unless I line it. Oh yeah, I can put some sort of like real thin cling film lining it and then foam inside the cling film area so I can take the shell off because there'll be cling film between the foam and the shell. No idea when you're doing it. I just use foam film then, make it all nice and rigid. But I don't have the weight against the difference it'll make. Still just have to get used to it. It's still flyable. Didn't do anything crazy. Felt a bit wobbly when the wind was blowing a bit, but...
see it like there. You see it wobble on the picture a bit then. That's because it's like a bit worried. That wasn't due to the acceleration, that's just because it just feels like that when the wind hits it. Like I say, the, it, you can feel, you know, there's a, a lot of flex on that. You've got to fly another one. Fly another one and get used to that and then go back to this. You feel the flex. But then you can do that yourself, like I said, you know, grab hold of the motor in each hand and just twist. Don't do it too hard, but you'll see that there's a lot of flex. Then you get a carbon fiber frame and do that and you'll see there's no flex. And it does make it a... It's like driving a sports car against an old... A Citroen Dolly. <laughs> you know, the, the, there you go, there's some flex in the suspension. Wallowing around like all over the place, and that's what this feels a little bit, a little bit like that. Not terribly bad, just because I'm used to the the, uh, the other frame. But it's still quite controllable. Get used to it.